Namaste. A warm welcome to all of you who joined uh, this uh, Friday evening uh, for our 15th uh, edition of Ketiwala Dialogue. Uh, this um, evening we have with us a learned scholar, uh, panelist Sridhar Banu. We would introduce him during the course of a few minutes from now. And the focus would be on farmers as uh, consumers and related uh, discussion. Um, at Ketiwala, we have been doing uh, dialogues in not just uh, uh, one language, but we would like to extend to many um, uh, communities at large. So without much ado, I would uh, um, go through the little introduction part, which would take about seven and a half minutes. Uh, one uh, interesting uh, uh, thing about uh, this uh, panelist today is uh, not just farmers, he's a uh, champion and uh, he's a messiah for consumer rights across the globe for all products. And so uh, farmers is one of them. And uh, you can ask many questions, uh, take benefit of his expertise in leading that uh, consumer uh, customer awards uh, product that he has launched. We would uh, introduce him more in detail in a few minutes. Uh, uh, one housekeeping uh, request to all of you is uh, please kindly keep your mobiles muted and unless you have a question to ask, typically questions you ask after the uh, presenter completes the speech. I hear some cross talk already. Whoever is not speaking, kindly uh, keep it uh, in mute. Our multiple devices logged in, kindly keep only one device. Thank you so much for support. So I'll continue. Uh, so I'll, uh, the Ketiwala uh, concept is it's, uh, connecting farmers to far dreamers. Connecting farmers to far dreamers means uh, farmers are there to produce. Uh, that is their... Uh, that life style and they are born for it and uh, that they are always capable of, um, of doing the farming and far dreamers are those probably they are little drifted from the farming but they always have love and affection to farming and so when you connect these two that is what is the philosophy of connecting like-minded people because every one of us need food on the table and as a gratitude to farmers, uh, we have launched this uh, Ketiwala. It's a product of Haldari Communications Private Limited. We are uh, an Indian company, currently Hyderabad, Bangalore, and uh, even in North India, Gurugam, we are registered there. Can I have the next slide, please? So what we do very quickly, let me highlight. I'll shorten the video view to get the view, complete view of my deck. Right, so Ketiwala is one of a kind agri-tech app. When I say app, it is like an Android app. It is an Android app. And I took one minute to download it and it's very user-friendly. And uh, currently don't distract yourself. Don't uh, try to download right now. After the session is over, you can uh, check with our coordinators to help you to get the proper installation. Uh, it connects the right farmers and uh, those who are interested in working with the farmers in the journey of cultivation and uh, farming activities. So this uh, ultimately, uh, maybe we are doing some beta testing currently, but once everything stabilized, we will have uh, the application uh, connecting all the farmers and uh, those uh, uh, whom we call as Niveshaks. Uh, they would be called, uh, like maybe would be farmers, you can say. Uh, both of them have synergistic mindset. Farmers can actually go to the field and do. Niveshaks may be a little far off from the field, maybe in another city or country. and But they have some interest in farming. So we try to bridge the gap between them. We have multiple uh, projects undertaken to achieve the objective of empowering the farmer. Uh, why farmer always is considered like they commit suicides, they need funds. And also during the elections, we hear a very 
very popular uh, slogan that uh, once you elect me, I will waive off all your loans. Um, or there are many, if you see any prime minister will have a set of schemes. For example, current government has Kusum, that is uh, giving the security of energy, that is solar energy and other forms to make your pump sets run. And uh, that's uh, one project that is uh, very popularly run. At least 35 lakh farmers are beneficiaries of the scheme and it is continuing further. Uh, so I will just touch base on our initiatives in the next slide, please. So first of all, Katie Corner. Uh, today's discussion itself is farmer as consumer uh, in the economy and ecosystem. Uh, what we do at KT Corner, we create uh, a platform uh, for the farmers to do D to C directly to customers, um, cutting uh, out the middleman in the game. And um, for Indian um, community, it is not a uh, unknown story. Lot of discussions around farmer centric uh, initiatives, and we also have a KT Kendra. It is some selected uh, mandal uh, because kendras we select and there we develop the Keti kendras. It's like a knowledge center where we give guidance and uh, technical inputs similar to, yes, there is a question of farmers and consumers trust are both important, fill the gap. That's true. Thank you, Sudhakar Edigaru. Appreciate your point. And uh, so uh, next is Keti Kalyan is where we, the word Kalyan in Sanskrit uh, is marriage. So we bring the togetherness between the Niveshaks and former so that they enter into mutual understanding and MOUs can be formed so that I give this piece of land which is uh, entitled to me as the owner, but you know how to do cultivation, you cultivate and uh, I will not ask you in return uh, money for it, but I may take the produce that you make. That kind of an understanding they may have, depending on their own mutual interests. And the Keti Wala Agri News is 24 mm -hmm. bar 7. We also are active in YouTube and we have channels. And all that discussion we are doing, including the dialogue KBD 15, will be made available as a digital repository for researchers, uh, including the agri-scientists to access to it for their own knowledge sake. And uh, people like uh, Sridhar Bhanugaru who are uh, doing a lot of work for society and in, we find that there is some synergy in agriculture, for example, he will be invited and called upon to stage to receive an award, for example, to set the context of today's talk. So, Keti Purashkar is to recognize individuals who have contributed to agriculture industry and uh, to really encourage them to for continue to do such thing. Keti Summit is what we are envisioning to bring up uh, as a physical event in person attendance like the virtual one, but unlike the one what you are all attending today. It is a, like a physical meeting in uh, a city like Bangalore, Hyderabad, or Delhi, and there we will uh, bring in all manufacturers community and also various other stakeholders and to help in semi-organic farming, uh, natural farming and regular different varieties of agricultural practices uh, on display. KVD, we are already doing it and KT Kosha, is like the land owners lease their land where small farmers uh, with no land can practice farming, enabling an income stream for win-win opportunities to both. Apart from that, we also provide some third-party services by engaging other teams like providing insurance, market access, supplying of fertilizers, pe pesticides, uh, we'll do some uh, auctioning and buyers connecting them with you and give some guidance and support and training, uh, seeds and crops, bore wells and smart farming, precision farming using uh, drones, etc. So we have a dialogues which is already well known to you. We bring in uh, many experts. You will see some of the previous uh, 
um, panelists who have been with us giving their knowledge. They represented uh, government and agricultural companies as well as professionals in the research and uh, academic uh, circles of the University of Agriculture Sciences. We welcome you to give your valuable feedback today. As the end of the program, there will be a chat session wherein we give you feedback form. Uh, this is about the moderator of the day, Dr. Kishore, myself, and uh, contributed to developing a agricultural textbook for uh, drones, uh, which goes with my signature, uh, along with a couple of other contributors as a key members. And that is called document number 77990 in Monarch database of uh, Bureau of Indian Standards. I come from a um, uh, background of uh, Indian Air Force as an aeronautical engineer, also served multinational companies. And uh, I'm also author of a textbook uh, on precision farming and uh, that is sold in digital form in Wiley publishers and also in uh, physical form. Uh, this is a magazine which we publish and it uh, used to be a bi-monthly one and uh, some of the interesting uh, topics that we are covering is uh, focus on women entrepreneurs like Agri Queen and uh, we focus on their challenges and how they are contributing to uh, because just like 50% of human beings are in agri industry, similarly 50% of human is women. So woman queen in one topic and similarly there is for children there's a quiz uh, questions also uh, i attended inaugural of a very small school where uh, in the early childhood they are taught how to um, sow the seed and then they connect the child with the connection between the agriculture and food and they learn from early childhood kindergarten stage itself and that's the best practices we want to bring it to your attention. These are all the great stalwarts, intellectuals, uh, professionals, pundits, uh, including Dr. Kiran Kumar in uh, ISRO, um, ex-chairman and many others uh, from IFCO and um, Market Federation leaders. Next slide, please. We have many others like Dr. Gayatri and Dr. Sumita. They have done research in uh, usage of drones and uh, UGVs. And we had members who spoke on different industrial aspects of uh, agriculture and also different languages. Like in Telugu, we came across with speakers like uh, Chintal Venkat Reddy, he's a Padma Sri Awardee. And also we have uh, other distinguished speakers like uh, Sudha Karidigaru. Interestingly, today he has also joined our program. And MCV Prasad Garu, again, President of India awardee. So next slide, please. So today's uh, distinguished panel speaker is um, Sri Sridhar Banu. And he's founder and CEO of President of the customer of us and uh, he's the fully it's a fully owned division of uh, consumer metrics informatics and uh, Sri Sridhar has about three and a half decades of uh, experience in corporates and also a passionate uh, consumer rights activist uh, it's my fortune to have interacted with him in person uh, I know him from more than a decade and uh, and out of sheer passion of Indian consumers uh, should not be subject of fraud. They should be uh, protected. So he has created the social for profit platform named as Consumer Awards for the last 14 years. And he has been publishing consumer rights evangelizing magazine by the same name and Consumer Awards, uh, which is fast growing in circulation in corporates, financial institutions, university libraries, and consumer facing organizations on uh, regulatory and also regulatory bodies. Uh, in our library also, we have his magazine subscribed in our group of institutions. Next slide, please. 
So this is a feedback soon after the main speaker, after my introduction is complete almost now, uh, you would have time a little bit to ask questions. While somebody is asking questions, uh, you can parallelly fill in the feedback form and also look up to what is next, what are the upcoming uh, programs from our um, Ketiwala. Thank you so much. Sridhar Gari, you can continue speaking. Yeah. And then uh, meanwhile, uh, Sharath yeah. will bring up. Yeah. yeah. Uh, first of all, uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Kishore Garu, for uh, inviting me here. A very warm, you know, welcome and good evening to all the you know participants who have joined over here. It's my privilege uh, to be here on KB Dialogues, and my you know thanks to uh, Dr. Kishore and to all of you who have uh, joined here to uh, listen to me. And it, again, uh, Dr. Kishore, it is an honor to be part of so many other panelists who are very, very illustrious and as illustrious as you are. And I don't think I I, I compare with any of these people uh, other than the singular passion that, you know, of course, we carry with, you know, in, in one area of the, you know, the consumer rights and whether the consumers are getting the right uh, value for their money and other things. So with that big thank you to KV Dialogues, I was again, you know, just wanting to Part this point very, very with a, with a lot of, you know, brutal honesty. Initially, I was thinking that, you know, I was doing a, you know, favor to KB by being a you know, speaker over here. But today you have, you know, uh, given me the information about the, you know, kind of speakers and, you know, their background. Um, you know, it, it's really an honor to be here and, uh, you know, learn so many things about what KB is doing. And most of these, as you have said, you know, very, very truly, for connecting farmers to faraway dreamers and in in while while giving your introduction i've noted that you have said you know you have uh, you know mentioned one more thing that these are some of these people you know the farmers they are born to do that activity of the produce and then there are some far off dreamers who are actually having this trishna or that you know that will and you know to do something but maybe they are caught up in their you know mechanical urban lives or you know in other forms of vocation but you know the heart a portion of the heart or you know d by dx of the heart is still there with the you know the old roots the farming and other things i would like to take one step back here and say that we think that these people uh, whom we are calling as farmers and you know allow me this liberty of just you know articulating this a little bit more um, we think that these people are uh, you know born to be farmers but i I was giving it a lot of thought before I was actually, you know, working on some data for this talk. These people whom we are calling as farmers and probably they are born to do this, produce and food, put the food on the table or bring it to the, you know, ecosystem called the marketplace and everywhere. They do have a choice of probably being a trader, you know, having, you know, getting educated, becoming a banker with an MNC bank, get a very, you know, high, uh, you know, plush job, you know, which can kick in salary month after month after month without questions. But they have chosen to take the toil with the soil and, you know, um, undergo this, you know, entire labor and be part of that ecosystem. It is by choice uh, they have, you know, actually, because in today's world, you know, the kind of, you know, way, the, the way education is being, you know, promulgated and evangelized and other things, anybody worth his name, you know, the situation has changed drastically from 25 years when we were actually, people were running behind uh, employment exchanges. Today, there is a lot of demand for anybody who can speak a couple of sentences in English, you know, there are jobs coming and, you know, falling your way with at, at least a minimum assured salary and other things. Still, these people uh, who belong to this cult called farmers, you know, hats off to them and salute them. They have chosen to take up this profession of uh, agriculture and they are actually toiling day in and day out going through all the you know be, be, be it they are bigger the larger farmers or the small smaller ones they are facing uh, you know the the challenges and obstacles that they have been facing and probably biting the bullet in the way you know of course we do hear about some of the you know not so desirable instances such as the suicides and various other things we'll come to that as we talk about it yes and you know so there's a lot of respect to this entire topic so it's a, it's a matter which is very very close to the heart so you know in one way i was extremely interested to 
you know, commit myself to this, uh, you know, KV dialogue uh, for farmer as a consumer because both are, uh, you know, very, very uh, close in two different, you know, ways. But I, I thought, you know, let me, let me do some bridging activity. Okay. So before uh, we go, you know, we take off, you know, and I, I, I share some of the slides, you know, on what my reading has been. Um, I would like to give you a very brief background about, you know, what customer Avaz is. If Mr. Sharath can put up the slide. Um, we called ourselves aptly as customer Avaz, uh, representing the voice of the consumers. And um, it's held by our the company, which is called, which I call it as a social for profit company. That is consumer metrics informatics. In a, in a larger sense, when we say consumer metrics, we are measuring uh, we are measuring the experience of the consumer or you know the person who's actually you know trading his you know money for uh, some products or services in return and consuming something something from the marketplace so uh, customer avas was an app name we wanted it like kheti wala to ring a bell across in the first you know try out and then you know connect with people so we have spent we have put 13 years behind us and we are an indian uh, you know consumer specific and again, I mean, here, when I say consumer here, retail, you know, consumer specific, uh, both portal as well as the print medium, there is actually work in progress on our portal. So it's going to be put up shortly in front of you, all of you. And uh, we are, we are publishing a quarterly magazine called Customer Avas with the same name. Uh, while we are headquartered in Delhi, we are actually having a footprint across the country. We are having, uh, you know, uh, but before we go there, you know, I'll tell you what is the mission and vision of our organization. When we looked at India uh, as a, you know, as a country, and then we we did some amount of study, you know, how we landed on, uh, you know, our, our, our mission and journey uh, about customer hours and, you know, with this particular goal was that. I would like to share with you when we did some kind of a sampling of 100 customers and 100 of their purchases, we found that about 70 of the customers had problem with about 50 of their purchases. So when we are taking a matrix, you know, when you are taking actually a ratio, you are having approximately uh, 3,500 number of cases or, you know, a problems or grievances when I call them out of, uh, you know, uh, out of probably uh, 10,000 uh, instances, uh, sampling data. So when you look at as an engineer about, you know, products, implements, or, you know, call it uh, appliances that we, you know, procured for our household um, or within our, within our household, most of these products like, you know, appliances, ACs or whatever you call them, TVs, you know, automotives, they come with a mean time between failure and engineering that we all know of. And, you know, they, that is a very, very, very low value. Now, when the mean time between, uh, you know, failure and, you know, the, the, is very, very low and there is a very high, um, you know, insistence on quality with so many parameters, with, with, with so many metrics for quality and other things, why do we have this, uh, you know, uh, 3,500 cases out of instances out of a 10,000 base, you know, which is which is very, very high and intolerable. So over here, what we found was there is a need to educate the Indian consumers regarding the consumer rights. And why do we say we need to educate? I'll not spend a lot of time over here. But, you know, uh, what we found was there is a lot of vertical education within India. Somebody is a botanist, somebody is a banker, somebody is a software algorithm writer. And, you know, there we, we have vertical specialization. But, you know, nobody would come to know what their consumer rights are. And in the process, what happens is uh, they, are, they are losing out when they go out as a consumer. We are all, you know, breadwinners for our family doing our profession. I'm probably a you know, a botanist, I'm a banker, you know, I'm a, you know, teacher, I'm various things. And I earn my money at the end of the month. When I earn my money at the end of the month and I go out into the market to spend that money, there is, uh, there is, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, an empirical data which shows that we have a lot of, uh, you know, leakage that is going out into the system uh, by way of, you know, consumers not getting the rightful due for their money spent. So, what we are trying to do is the first point we are trying to educate them by creating the awareness. Okay. So uh, I believe they know there, there's a spelling mistake, which is, which has come over there. I think, you know, we, we should read this as creating awareness and through the awareness that we create uh, through the education, 
we are empowering the customers by giving them you know the choice to choose you know the which is the right vendor and which is a wrong vendor which is a right service which is a wrong service to choose by giving the data by you know using certain yardsticks metrics certain you know uh, putting uh, touchstone tests and various things and the third thing is that by having this knowledge about various things how to choose his you know customers in a right way the indian consumers are now much more enriched customers so we say that we are doing actually a 3e in a simplistic terminology and then by doing this we are also doing uh, another activity wherein to the right vendors to the right you know there are we, we say that you know the entire vendor uh, universe is divided into good vendors and not so good vendors okay some of them not so good uh, accidentally and some of them not so good willfully so you know th this can be discussed uh, in a, in a separate forum but then we all know that there are many you know uh, willful fraudulent you know uh, practitioners out there who want to make a quick buck and you know become a fly by night operators but for the right vendors who really want to choose what their customers want and how do they really want to uh, you know kind of cater to the customer satisfaction our study provides uh, you know a customer's pulse for you know what are the wants and you know the, the dislikes and where the customers are really getting hurt and you know things like that so when we are saying that you know most of the times when the indian customers are having problems and other things very quickly let's breeze through this indian commerce and law follows what we call as caveat emptor which means buyer be beware which is the reason why our government and you know the the department of consumer you know affairs and the ministry of consumer affairs always keeps advertising jago grahak jago um I mean if i were to flip the coin on the other side and if i were to say that if you are a consumer in a country like you know uk us or dubai singapore uh, and you were to spend your 100 denomination more often than not you would be getting your 100th denomination the value for the 100th denomination back for the amount that you have paid i mean i'm taking 100 as a base yardstick here and you know probably a thank you mr customer or thank you miss customer for your patronage and for your loyalty to us and if in case it so happens that there has been a default or deficiency of service willfully or even you know not so willfully the law of the land is not only very very strong it is also very very fast the consumer law out there is not only very strong but it's also very very fast now when we flip this scenario back to indian and if you are an indian consumer going out and spending your 100 rupees back how many times were some of the most educated people can you know have a hand on their heart and say now scale that 100 to a 1000 or a 10000 or you know something like that move it to real estate move it to appliances that you are purchasing your you know mutual fund investments how many times can you have a hand on your heart and say ki that you have got the value of the 100th denomination spent back to you which means the rightful due how many times did you get so there is a big big gap now let's come to how strong we are on the law on paper we are a phenomenal tiger we have a fantastic law but what is there on the execution front so this is what has made up to look at this subject very very seriously and we actually uh, took an avatar as a portal wherein uh, consumers can post their reviews and they can raise their issues to us and what we can deliver along with the 3e that i have already mentioned and also education about good products and the bad products good practices and the bad practices what we can also what we also do is we do something called as a mediation why is it why is this important um, law when i said consumer law we talked about consumer law there are consumer forums and there is a government you know uh, uh, instituted uh, regulatory framework in place having said that the minute you approach law you are into an adversarial uh, engagement with you know your vendor or with your ecosystem okay the minute you get into an ad adversarial engagement it is either you win or i win and if either of you you know whatever be the result if i lose i have a bitter taste about you for the rest of my life which i'll carry and if you you know probably lose out then you know you are going to have a very negative feeling with me and you are not going to entertain me entertain me as a consumer this has come through in the case of amazon wherein they have said that 
you know, we will have, uh, you know, product refunds, 100% of them. And once they had a list of uh, some of the consumers who have actually refunded two or three products, immediately they have, you know, highlighted them and they have stopped, uh, you know, engaging with them or delivering uh, products to them or fulfilling their requests. So such is the uh, requirement and there is a need for a non-adversarial and a mediation type. You know, if I want to say something in Indian, um, uh, you know, nomenclature, something like a, a panchayat type, you know, dispute resolution system that we would like to advocate. That is the underlying core theme of customer avas. While customer avas is a name which is being instituted to, you know, be a head turner and puller because end of the day, unless until you are that, nobody would look at you. So we need, you know, we know that these are the people they are having cases and we want to make ourselves very ex explicit there. Having said that, so there is an underlying dispute resolution support system which we keep offering. And today, as we speak, we have close to about 450 cases which have been resolved by customer AWAS dispute resolution system only on email, wherein end of the day, the people, uh, a common consumer in India from Kerala, from, you know, Tiruvananthapuram, from, you know, Tanjavur, from Kashmir, from Mumbai, from their email and from the comfort of their desk. They have shot out an email and, you know, one to the vendor or the service provider, be it a very large telecom service provider, be it a very large automobile service provider, an aviation service provider, a banker, and there have been good vendors. I must give them credit. They have listened when we have highlighted the case to them and appealed to their, their integrity, saying that, hey, here is a loyal customer of yours. He wants to be connected with you. Otherwise, he would have walked off from you. And he's facing this problem. And as a third party, we can see that there is a dispute over here. Can you come to the desk and resolve this? So we have uh, been able to resolve about 450 cases in the favor of the consumer. Now, let me take a step back and, you know, also share with you another data, you know, part of data with equal brutal honesty. There are nearly about 1,000 cases where the vendors chose not to give any heed to what we were trying to raise to them as an issue. That's the reality which we are faced with. Okay, because end of the day, we are not a, a, a formal regulatory framework authority. We are trying to be a social for profit mediator who's trying to, you know, bring good to the corporate as well as to the consumer. What is the bringing good to the corporate? If they listen to their consumer and if they listen to the feedback and if they are willing to rectify, the customer is going to stay with them for the life. So that's that's the uh, the win situation for them. And for the consumer, he's definitely getting the win. He, she is definitely getting the win because the corporate has chosen to listen to me. So that's the long and short of customer avas. Yes, I've taken a little bit of time to explain to you. So now we are, um, our, our um, outlook towards what we call, we are, we, are, we are held by a private limited company called Consumer Metrics Informatics Private Limited. Having said that, our, uh, our uh, goal or motto is not to sell a product first, but our goal and motto is to see that the Indian retail customer gets the rightful due for their money. That is where, that is why we are in, in this business uh, as a business, as a social for profit. Okay. So having said that, let's move over to the next area where we can have, we can see the, the strata of farmers and the, you know, the, the vertical of agriculture that will fall into this area of being consumers and how we can actually analyze this particular case and see what best we can uh, take a look at it in a 360 degree view. So from what we have been talking as, you know, a consumer world overall. So let's, let's take a small bit into agriculture. Um, we have a lot of, you know, very, very senior uh, people and veterans in the field of agriculture. So I have picked up this data from some of the most reliable sources, uh, the topmost of them being, yes, you know, um, undisputedly India is still and it will continue to be a largely agri-driven economy. As per the latest statistics that we have, and this information has been furnished in the Lok Sabha by the Union Agriculture Minister, agriculture was contributing to 17% of our GDP. It provides livelihood to 70% of the rural households. 
provides employment to 58% of the across Indian cross section populace. The production of agriculture has grown from 87 billion US dollars to 479 whopping billion you know, US dollars over the last 15 years. And on one particular, you know, uh, we call it, you know, uh, what should I call it? You know, an item like cotton we are talking about. Okay, we are the largest. We, I think you know India. We, we are proud to that. You know, India is the largest exporter over here, and in overall exports, and you know, uh, by the way of you know getting forex uh, revenue in, we stand ninth. You know, amongst all the countries. That's 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 the in, that's India's status, commitment, and involvement with agriculture. That's you know almost since. 200 years before or 500 years before the Britishers were there within the country, we heard of our education from our fathers, forefathers and various people. And if uh, most of us thought that, you know, there's been the boom in banking and software and BPO industry and therefore agriculture would have probably taken a backseat. Sorry, data shows us that agriculture has been booming since last 15 years. But is that all favorable to the farmers on the ground? Because as we move to the next slide, yes, you know, we see how do we connect farmers here? Farmers are not only the face, but they are the entire embodiment of the entire agriculture. So the last mile, as we talk about, or the last, you know, the, the, the personification of agriculture is nothing but the farmers who are there representing and, you know, taking forward this uh, industry. Uh, by, by getting the produce and other things, you know, getting into the entire act of, you know, cycle of producing and, you know, bringing the crop home. Yeah. Here is again some uh, very important data that, you know, we have with respect to what has been the role of agriculture as a gross value add in somewhere in 2012. And how is it as of right now? Okay. In year 2021, 21, 22. 22, 23, as we see the multi multiples of times, the growth which has happened as a gross value add. Okay. So we have agriculture providing the raw material to industries. We have it, you know, playing a key role in international trade. It has a big share in the national income and providing agriculture, providing employment to the, you know, households and also the populace of the country. And a contribution to the capital formation and also the providing, you know, various, you know, this food surplus to the expanding population and things. So let's, let's get to the, let's get to the point as to where actually the farmer is, is coming into the picture as a consumer into the entire economy and into the ecological system. Hello. Yeah. Mr. Sudhaka ready. Uh, you see, uh, the farmer's integrity is under check in the sense farmers do not have any standards to comply with, although they know, you see, what they are expected to do before we seek the trust of the customers or consumers. That's right. This is, this is where the, it's not that to belittle the farmers, but their right. ignorance should not... Uh, uh, put them into difficulties. If there, if only there are some standards, any councils or consumer councils or bargain Correct. councils. Correct. Correct. Far, farmer is uh, as much equally see, uh, worried about his price. Uh, in, in the light of, uh, you know, is having to get the price, he should also remember that he should keep his quality in check. So that's True. not what is happening in most of the cases. If right. you have bargain councils like uh, consumer protection uh, cycles in the commodities, even in this produce also, if you have bargain councils, farmer is uh, not subject to any difficulty. He, he, he is by all, he will by all means say try to comply. So if only he knew that he had to follow some grading. Yeah. If, or, if or, I may. If, if I may uh, look at it like there are many boards like coffee board and a tea board uh, where there are also kind of products that are consumed. Uh, they kind of they act like a cartel and Silk set board. some price. So Silk that board is obvious. Well. Anything you do, you can't avoid this cartel. Remember, 
as long but, as human beings are there with this greed you can't yes. stop those things this but is it, where uh, all things are there in check why why yeah. are why is the need for supreme courts <laughs> they exactly. are not the governments doing anything mischief yes, yes. yes. we are all human beings so i am not saying uh, one party is bad one party is good so given the chance everybody would like to use i don't want to deviate the topic no, so very, very right very rightfully mentioned sir uh, so the bargain councils should come into the place and have uh, this grading and uh, the so called uh, uh, specifications to see earmarked or uh, formed i mean not stringent uh, specifications or reasonably better specifications so that in the mandis itself why talk of bargain council uh, which come later you have ap mandis which are not uh, the rightly placed see in fact when you go lot when you go and register your lot how do you trace this lot uh, unless you tag this with some grading or some specifications correct yeah traceability traceability challenge traceability is, uh, is, yeah, yeah. is in another uh, discussion we will handle like using blockchain or ondc we can no, anything solve anything for that matter it's not to say that you see, you see the, the farmer if he is educated yes he will comply with all these things this is where the bargain council is trying to help the farmer must also keep the farmer under check so please not remember only education I'm... not only being educated he must also have integrity yes integrity Sheer is what i wrote not, already uh, in, the, in the in the chart yeah. box i wrote i see integrity yeah. is as much important yes, as yes the, yes yes i as seen that the, as we seek the trust of the cons- consumer correct correct both both very are much. very very important very much so then very how much. do you expect integrity unless you have a council see which which make the framework to be followed by the farmer now for instance as you say just about one hour ago i got a call from uh, karnataka mm-hmm. exporter mango exporter who is interested to buy my product okay. and he is worried whether my mango is uh, produced with cultivar cultar cultar means the hormone which uh, is expedite uh, the maturity expedite the growth uh, yeah, growth you know, maturity. the maturity and then put uh. Uh, put the suppose if it is eaten by a pregnant woman what is the fate of uh, a ch- child coming out of that woman correct correct the har- hormones say like how hormones you are inducing in the plant you very are true. inducing in the fetus of uh, the woman which very is true. very dangerous we are playing against nature anyway i don't want to lecture here so please remember these things to see in mind and then see how you have to in fact last time when uh, a known uh, secretary was there i tried my maximum and i tried through this uh, telangana marketing department to see that this bargain council is established during that period unfortunately even, okay. even, even today it is not happening i don't know how far i will succeed in meeting these ministers or chief minister who, is, who are known to me and then uh, anyway it's a matter of time how we succeed and then uh, you know the 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 farmers are put to we are being cheated by these so called traders also incidentally right. you'll see so, that coming through in you know some of the following uh, you know slides and things like that yeah So, so thank uh, you for that is a very very mind 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 input provided that how farmer or uh, farmers are helped from being do at Correct. the same time he will comply with the standards provided there are standards established yeah and how then at the same time uh, you have bargain council how hmm. how if when he complies with uh, how uh, he should be helped uh, by the traders uh, see in, in in the process of complying with those standards that is all my request thank you yes 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 i have your point uh, having said that uh, sudhakar reddy garu i know the uh, topic here you know we were trying to discuss is uh, you know it's not just farmer versus consumer here we are actually seeing the farmer himself as the consumer which we will you know elaborate you know for over a minute you know as we move ahead i see that mr siva has a question yes mr siva oh i just was kind of wanted to make a point i guess even the the farmers you know even if even if they don't want to and they had like the, the best of intentions there could be other agencies which could you know drive them the wrong way 
with with the the hormones and stuff i guess they exactly. probably should be a regulatory authority agency which should guide the entire process right. however again again i don't i don't want to get into or suggest uh, a high handedness or a a government full control which probably would drive us into a a soviet era type situation correct correct we are talking about free market and operations over there and to see that how the frameworks are more aiding us rather than creating obstacles and other things point taken yeah i guess the the entirety of it is 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 creating an awareness and an environment for you know producing good or or putting out the best thing uh, for everybody because at, at every stage one person would be a consumer at a, any stage you know no matter what you're producing you will exactly. be a consumer, consumer. So, very true. When, very when, true. when i consume well when i feel a good feeling about my consumption i tend to put out good that's in general you know correct correct yeah and mr sharad we can move to the next slide so again a quick uh, you know, top level view at farmer as a consumer within the economy and the ecosystem, as we say that, you know, he's not only the face of agriculture, but he's the entire embodiment out there, playing a vital cog wheel of the Indian economy. Uh, here, we would like to say that, you know, while, uh, you know, veterans like Sudhakar Edigaru has mentioned that, you know, we should see that the trust between farmers and consumers should be established while we take that point, you know, uh, here we are trying to bring out a scenario that we are talking about an ecological system where there is a mutual consumer relationship which is mentioned. The actual consumer of the produce, while he's the consumer of what the farmer produces, he's, it's, it's his re, you know, uh, responsibility and you know, the, 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 to, to see that even the farmer is a consumer of his consumption. He's also a consumer of basically the other side of the coin and he's he's basically utilizing the services. So there is a mutual relationship of consumer or if you ex extend it to one step further, customer. Like the way we say, uh, uh, environment is consumer to us as much as we are consumers to the environment. You know, it is interdependence. It's basically we cannot, one cannot live without the other. So as much as the farmer needs his crop to be sold the consumers and the marketplace also need the farmer and his produce which is which is very very inevitable without which we all know dr kishore has made the statement you know the food on the table that is a vital underlining statement you know without that basically the food on the table is completely missing you know after all you cannot eat your dollars or you know export figures or cagrs and you know gra graphs okay so why this interdependence puts the farmer on a very, very important and ever-growing pedestal with respect to this market. I would like to take you back in time to 2008 when even my, my, my conscious brush with, you know, tracking some events of agriculture even before I started or founded for Customer Awas. This is actually a news clipping from Times of India, if I'm not wrong, if I remember correctly, and this is somewhere in 2008. The subject line is very, very self-explanatory. So it says Bengal farmers from Hooghly district demand that price of potatoes per bag should be 150 instead of 70 to 80. Now for that, for want of that additional 70 rupees per bag, okay, the whole produce of 25,000 kilos of potatoes have been thrown or probably you know, crushed you know, under their trucks or whatever it is, and they have been laid to waste. Let's look at a very, very back of the hand, simple calculation. It said the news reads that there are probably there are 500, about 500 bags, which equivalent, you know, equal to about 25,000 kgs, which means that approximately we have about a 50 kgs bag each of them. So farmers probably were given by that regulatory authority or that bargaining council uh, that, you know, probably you know, the Monday about 80 rupees per bag. And the farmers felt that they are unable to recover the money spent. There are now small farmers, there are large farmers, there are farmers uh, you know, owning half an acre, there are farmers owning 500 acres. 
put together, they represent the cross section of the farmers. Now, what is easy for a farmer who has probably 50 acres, maybe a very, very Herculean task for a farmer who owes a three acre land or a two and a half acre, acre land and things like that. And he may be making both the ends meet, you know, only by, you know, putting actually, you know, a lot of, lot of effort and, you know, uh, waiting for three months or four months for that crop to come home and he would be probably wanting to repay his debts or whatever loans taken. Take a look at those numbers. They speak a lot. Okay. So when we are talking of 70 rupees extra, which was denied to the farmer per a bag of 50 kilos, which means an amount of 1.4 rupees per kg was denied to the farmers completely, which means we are talking about an amount which is probably 35,000 rupees, which today in a class A city, Probably an auto driver or a taxi wala or an Ola or Uber driver would be earning this much or back those days, maybe any small type, you know, um, what do you call, you know, entry level employee or, you know, uh, one step above him would have would be earning so much of salary home uh, in, a, in a class A city. Now for that amount, imagine on the right hand side. 25,000 kilos of a very, very valuable food item that has been laid to waste. So we need to take a you know minutes break and think seriously, what have we come to? Have we become so greedy in our bargaining that we are out here to deny the farmer his basic rightful dues that which he incurred, wherein he thought instead of taking 1.4 rupees less home per kg, let me trash this produce so that because you know then i can artificially generate demand like dr kishore was mentioning to me sometime back about that you know boston tea party kind of scenario where i would dump lots of stuff only to get my you know increase my demand or something like that so that and in the whole bargain let's you know who is the ultimate sufferer is it only the consumer who's suffering is it the trading community who's suffering because even they would be deprived of their trading cash rotation for about three months. Let's say if the crop of potatoes takes about three months for it to come home and, you know, again, the farmers bring it to the mandi or whatever it is. And so what exactly, where are we actually leading to? You know, we talked about, you know, not only the bargaining councils, we talked about what the consumers are, what consumers' interests are. End of the day, there are some human values. When someone sees uh, that, such hard effort of you know producing something over three months and while the farmer produces this he's in a state of denial he's not having a cash flow like an employee or a daily labor he doesn't have the privilege of a you know uh, a lala in a dukan what is called where he ends his gala every day with some cash moving or even a you know pan shop owner where he's you know sitting there and he's making some money at the end of the day okay and if we expect even the entire farmers to, you know, sit out and, you know, run pan shops or, you know, go to the daily labor, what is going to happen to the in capitals and underlined word food on the table, right? So we need to, you know, take a break at, you know, the various mechanisms and really understand what is the need of the hour. As consumers, what is it that we need to look at? Are we only being driven by the best price for ourselves? Or are we also looking at you win, I win kind of situation where the farmer is able to sustain himself and come back? Here, I would like to say hats off and cheers to Khetiwala for really doing, you know, a direct to the consumer, uh, you know, centric approach where they are trying to really sustain the farmer and give him a cash flow mechanism on time. Now, remember, as much as we talk about, and I have done a lot of study about this while we were really talking about customer avas, that's where I spent my last 13 years. I've also had the opportunity to study the farming and agriculture within the country. When we talk of any other industry or even in a salaried mechanism, people talk of and they live by this one single phrase called cash flow. An employee gets money on the 30th day. A dukandar gets money at the end of the day. A labor, daily labor gets money at the end of the day. Okay, a railway coolie gets money at the end of the day with which his family runs and his expenses run. What happens in the case of a farmer? 
and he's at the lowest strata he's not i'm not talking about you know somebody a very big producer who's spending about 5 crores of you know or 50 crores of money in a spider man movie or a 5 billion you know amount where after the movie is completed he's going to anyway he's be he's assured of you know the community buying out the rights and you know and he's going to get his bumper profits we are talking about someone who's going to have an uncertainty in his production cycle there could be weather based uncertainties there could be eventuality based uncertainties there could be any you know uh, force majeure kind of uncertainties there could be a crop burnout there could be uh, you know any kind of attacks Uh, whether the insurance is getting is first of all is he in a state where he is getting any insurance does he have enough cash flow that he is able to get insurance for his product what if his cash flow his his crop misses the cycle I mean I have had some friends who been uh, working in software industries and they have also been part time farmers so they could take it you know very very lightly when they actually cultivated mangoes in a twenty acre land close to Hyderabad. and suddenly you know in one year they told me that yeah this year we had a lot of uh, you know insect attack on the you know crop therefore we lost the crop but then it didn't impact his cash flow or survival because he was getting money home regularly through some other profession or some other avocation so what is happening to in, in the case of the farmers particularly to the lower scale the smaller farmer okay not the very very rich farmer who's having about 10 tractors or you know about 500 acres of land or mechanized farming and you know everything is insured and you know everything is happening as per the documents his produce is sold out or and insured to mnc companies you know for lease or something like that okay so this this requires some very serious and deep thought uh, charan ji next slide i'm actually bringing to your attention one more incidents which happened probably this happened in the guntur district in, in this particular year that i came to know of there must be thousands of incidents which happened like that i'm only here you know bringing to your attention one uh, you know particular incident you know uh, that that came to my uh, notice through someone very very closely known to me and you know associated with me there was a bumper tom tomato crop and you know because the right the farmers were not able to get the rightful due from the the trading and middleman community they decided as a union or you know as a group of people they would bring their crop from their villages to the the city mandi and then they'll try to sell them now just to crush that kind of a moment or just to make you know um, a fast buck on such kind of a scenario or to have the farmers within their control this this community or the middleman they have actually uh, played uh, on the moment something which we even see as something like a short selling in stock markets or something like that they have broken the you know the floor price for the crop on that day and they sold at a price lesser than what the farmers brought and tried to sell for consecutively 2 3 days you now the crop being organic it could not sustain and the farmers saw that they are not going to get their price they are wasting their time and what is captured in red is for all of you to read and it's self explanatory i really i really really don't uh, you know need to read it out and explain but then it would leave us aghast as to what is really happening at ground zero while we all talk of so many good things happening you know ra 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 the government is doing so many things or so many you know schemes and there are you know raitu bazaars or there are you know itcs e chaupals which are there and so many other things which are running successfully in spite of that we have also captured the fact that you know in cotton we are the largest exporter in the world and you know so many times i remember browse you know browsing the newspapers and seeing that the lower strata farmer you know who has been producing cotton was unable to repay his debts and what i have come to know in my study about this particular community and this particular industry is that in the villages the the scenario is not something like you know what is happening in a city in a banking system or you know in a credit evaluation system there is no civil or trans union or equifax in 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 the villages in the villages they live by the pride the, and the honor they earn they, they 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 live by the word that xyz farmer has been he has borrowed money for his daughter's marriage or for cultivating his farm and has he been able to repay it or not we hear about you know dr kishor also has mentioned that many politicians they do come and they make this 
they make this um, you know you know uh, statements about waiving the farm loans and other things i would like to again uh, you know state this that i have traveled into interior villages in north india in haryana i have sat with farmers i have had hookah with them you know i have the pride and honor of you know you know them sharing their hookah along with me with the village mukhiyas and other things and they said a, a truthful farmer will never waive allow his loans to be waived because it's a matter of pride for him that he's repaying that is what he lives by in the villages he they live only by intangible that is the you know the respect they earn okay there are actually a lot of non farmers who are making use or they are abusing the you know the politicians grants or the waivers and bringing a lot of bad name to the farming community too this has been observed first hand by me no offense to anyone but this is actually what i have done in my own study when i've been to some of the interior villages and i've i've studied them in fact many of the people there have asked us that why don't you suggest an alternative you know resource you know an income generation for these farmers so that just in case if the crop fails they have something to live by this has been a fact this is this is something which i have actually heard of course about 6 7 years back but yes as helpless as i am i was not able to immediately suggest something because we are talking about you know my in my line of you know activity we are talking about consumer rights and various things which are most of the people who are actually running into uh, in running in cities with double income you know group houses and you know they have no time to look at their own scenarios and they look at outsourcing their issues to somebody uh, somebody like a customer avas and you know they don't have time to understand their own uh, rights at depth and then they would still like to get the full value for their money okay so the the bottom line really in this slide is where does this leave the farmers the economy and all of us as indians once again hats off and kudos to kheti wala this has been something like a dream for me that i should play a role in something like that and uh, as doctor as 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 you know sudhakar reddy sir has said you know we should have some you know systems and checks in place we should have bargaining councils we should go to the chief minister we should go to there are some rules there are some schemes uh, what i have understood is that we cannot provide a perfect solution to anything and everything happening across but to the extent that we can to the extent that we can i think you know we must carry on with the good you know feeling that we are doing a social service yes we may not be able to do justice to everybody on day number 1 but this is only a journey which is moving ahead and in the course of time i am sure the multitudes would join people would understand it is actually a movement it is like you know uh, an en masse education scenario where everybody in the ecological system should get involved it is not one single it's not simply the government's you know responsibility it's not the consumer's responsibility it's everybody's responsibility to see that everybody wins in this particular scenario this is not a game this is not a prize that somebody running away from here okay and this is actually a scenario that for a long term and sustainable uh, goal that you know 20 years hence 50 years hence our children live to see that there is day after day after day after day the produce and the agriculture and food produce which is there on as a food on the table we all should get involved with this movement right now and move ahead and you know really kudos once again to kheti wala for doing a lot of activities out there even why i repeat saying this because many people like me we have a you know i have a dream that you know i should contribute in some way to the you know the agriculture or the farming community so as per the parlance of kheti wala i am a far off dreamer i am not there on the ground but i would like to connect in some way or the other like that you know as this momentum spreads as it connects with many people you know this will only you know be very very i mean i will say contagious in a positive way and it will start bringing government alone cannot do anything if government alone was able to do everything and if only consumer rights were able to enforce anything there would be no requirement for customer avas to exist if only traffic lights were you know able to bring the discipline we don't require the traffic police at all nor the courts nor the judges so there will be the good there will be the not good and the entire system will be uh, you know the tinkered or it will be changed at the drop of a hat at the you know uh, at the instance by uh, by the decision purely by the choice and decision that what is going to favor me right 
is is the drive that actually is guiding us today stepping out from that i am sure i think all of us should basically look at a holistic view and with an inclusive uh, outlook we should move ahead with this and maybe i think uh, kv can provide us some kind of a you know uh, guidance where most of us can get associated over here with them and play whatever small role in 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 this actually a major uh, you know i would say a haven or something like that sharad ji again moving ahead on what we are saying oh sudhakar reddy gar you have another question may may ask sorry for uh, no repetitive question i mean query not at all not at all so the whole idea this is not a monologue sir this is a discussion kv calls this as a discussion yeah, so I this is a discussion for i have gone to malaysia twice mm -hmm. i never found a, anywhere the traffic police <laughs> yes <laughs> such a small country it is the yeah. attitude attitude and attitude maybe Are singapore also sir pardon maybe singapore also yes and uh, you you it all depends it's not small or big it is the attitude 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 not only and that other is, thing uh, is system system there are no system. traffic cops in the united the states system, as well system 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 why we have improved to some extent the traffic see you are booking uh, people you know who are floating the rolls you have in this system how many times that fellow who has been caught who have done lot of uh, earlier uh, things it it comes into the digital thing and then he will be charged so if True. you have digital system even in mondays i, I just brought out uh, you know, for the sake of comparison when when you go to ap mondays we have arranged to say sorry to take little time you know not at all me, permit me we have connected uh, ap monday of telangana and ap monday of uh, sir uh, time is the discretion of director ddpa so when when we connected i am also an invitee <laughs> when you connected two mondays the digitization really helped to know what is the price prevailing elsewhere Yes, ITC is ITC is E Chowpal was an bad. example, sir. ITC is E Chowpal was an example. Pardon? Uh, ITC 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 is E Chowpal was an example. They use satellite communication system to actually you know uh, do this about almost fifteen years back. So But that again is a, is an isolated is instance. The extension on one side and uh, the marketing on the other side. the government can play a role the government yes. can play a role if you yes. can ap mondays are uh, you know strengthened with the digitization Correct. you can contact any part of the country wherever ap mondays are there True. these these uh, see you will be able to find out the better prices at, and be able to transport even the prime minister has announced 5 lakh fleet of transport vehicles what yes, happened sir. to all those farm lots Farmers exactly. are in shambles now. Not that yes, they basically they are wrong, which is what we are, we are not... talking in my next slide. Which is exactly what we are talking in my next slide. If you permit me, we are, we are not able to utilize these so-called principal strategies properly. Either from yeah. insecurity, from that's where I said system, 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 attitude, attitude, attitude. Both are important for from the government side as well as from the people side. Thank you. yeah i find it very very opportune to you know mention this particular point uh, as you know you with you know you uh, pertaining to your reference of you know traffic cops not being there in malaysia or something like that i find it very uh, you know appropriate opportune to draw this parallel there was this discussion happening at bureaucratic level about india and china why you know china is able to maintain things so successfully and you know india in spite of so many you know complex laws and you know framework and everything Uh, we we are unable to maintain or execute that so apparently it was one bureaucrat uh, mentioning to the other i don't know whether it is this is real or not but this has become very very popular and uh, it was the answer was uh, china has uh, you know india has law and china has order okay so so there is an iron hand which is ruling things you know sometimes you know you may feel that you know that is also required uh to bring the you know uh, implementation uh, to the ground level it was talked about um, in the you know just immediately after the nizam time uh, crime rate in hyderabad was very very low 
you know people used to shudder to even think of uh, you know crime because uh, the punishment to crimes was such you know brutal uh, that people would really really shudder to even think of crime uh, that was the very very early hyderabad after the nizam times is what i had heard but yes you know i am not saying that we should uh, go that way or something like that uh, having said that implementation is the key to everything so let's let's briefly go through this slide where we are saying that you know it, it's a matter of shame that you know while we are the highest exporter of cotton there are numerous suicide cases of you know cotton growing farmers across we must have seen lots of cases particularly uh, you know stemming out of uh, maharashtra specifically nagpur and various things uh, and sometimes even bounty crops also are acting as a you know there the farmers has two cases he we discussed about this one the crop there is a yield of the crop and second the crop gets wasted through an attack or you know through pests or you know insects or whatever it is we had the locust att attacks happening uh, during the you know covid time yeah, so something like that so one the farmer loses out when there is no uh, crop there is no crop yield at all two he is also losing when there is a bounty crop so there is really a need not only to put a government regulatory framework but to create a parallel system um, and you know roll it out on the ground there is a need for in fact khetiwala to or many more khetiwalas to be in the system to really stand shoulder to shoulder with the farmer and do the journey so the need has been really really identified so uh, what what does government do government will lay out policies but in the case of a harvest loss then you know first of all whether the farmer had insured or not and so what if there is a bounty so who's going to protect what is where is the infrastructure for the smaller farmer to really uh, you know roll out that everything that a larger farmer can do so can he get the same benefits as we are saying uh, the you know the produce can be brought out to anywhere in the ap mandi in, in, in the in the country and it can be sold there can a farmer who owns about a 3 acre land or a 4 acre land can he really execute that what is the land what is the mafia in the trading system or the middlemen uh, who are actually blocking the and choking the roads is it practically possible so these are where you know really organizations you know voluntary really organizations organization. should really really, really i think i'm really going yeah Uh, as i mentioned uh, unless there is a question to the speaker kindly be stay muted and cooperate thank you yeah so so this, so these are the things that have to be uh, taken into cognizance by us the common people who are not the farmers also in fact there is a need there is actually an imperative need that everyone who is not a farmer be a far off dreamer i'll borrow this statement from dr kishore here Mr. Sharad, next Thanks. slide. So here we are actually doing a brainstorming. I'm really thinking aloud. There are no answers really, as as uh, Sudhakar Reddy Garu, you have said that government has brought out a lot of policy and you know lot of strategies and you know rules. But if the rules only worked on their own, then we really really do not have any would not have had any problem. there are fraudulent and unwanted market practices which are uh, which are depriving the farmers uh, of really good policies and other things and as as dr kishore has already mentioned there are direct to the consumer mechanisms like mandis chaupals kisan bazaars these are nothing new they are happening since quite some time almost about two decades or something like that but still there are issues i hear of cases that even today when the farmers really want to buy fertilizers he is actually you know not having access to what do you call as um, you know the genuine and authentic fertilizers there is actually uh, contamination or even uh, you know mix up of all the proportions yeah, adulteration. adulteration adulteration is the right word yeah. adulteration and you know wrong products which are being brought to the Uh, brought to the farmer's desk and you know with a, with a you know look and feel which is very very similar to the original product uh, there is uh, no knowledge from the farmer's side to uh, discriminate the good one from the the original from the duplicate and there is a loss again which is happening there so the way forward probably some of the corporates who have a csr uh, mandates probably they can be you know uh, 
you know rallied around to come and you know make a difference over here voluntary organizations khetiwala at a larger extent and maybe more such you know organizations many more people many more far off dreamers more consumers who actually need to be educated that i am not looking at the food on my table today only but i need to ensure that this is going to stay in a sustained way uh, for a longer duration for my next generation and the next generation in the very sense that we are trying to protect for uh, forests or you know our environment and other things there is a need to actually protect this uh, entire agricultural practices and and you know the farming community uh, you know at large i have said this earlier they have really really hit the right note to identify the needs and problems a lot of activities are happening uh, you know from khetiwala side mr lakshman and also mr uh, you know uh, dr kishor have met me in person at delhi they have explained their view and they have uh, you know uh, rolled out their plan of really taking this movement to the streets and that's a very very noble thought and uh, many people have only thoughts and they have only some strategies or plans on the paper i must really congratulate the whole team over here who have actually bent their back and hit the streets so cheers to the entire team of uh, ketiwala who are relentlessly bringing out these uh, you know dialogues and you know rolling out plans and you know ketiwala uh, you know crop you know the direct to the consumer uh, shops and various things um, and the larger the larger uh, need is to really understand the problem that we have at hand it's like you know the farmer and the farming practice is like water is like the forest is like the environment and it's, it's if if we are not going to make efforts to sustain this we are quickly going to lose what we have uh, that's the message and i would like to uh, close this discussion uh, with the note that we all should remember that if push comes to shove the farmer also has a choice of pursuing an opportunity where he gets a money home every month or every day then where would most of us be in terms of you know we would be pushed to go to you know farming and you know learn this all from you know ground up zero so with that you know humble submission i i uh, close my uh, presentation thank you one and all for uh, you know having patiently listened to me uh, educated me in the process uh, thank you dr kishor for sharing many many details uh, of what khetiwala has been doing thank you uh, sridhar banu garu this is a token of appreciation for your wonderful speech and uh, in person we will my meet my token you. of appreciation is already my participation in this thank you very thank much i am honored yeah the uh, summary of today's discussion uh, we had interactive session um Uh, Sridhar Garu has uh, connected the concept of consumerism and uh, positioned farmer as a consumer because uh, end of the day farmer is a human and uh, he also consumes and uh, from that point of view uh, uh, they actually mutually interdependent on each other's produce one farmer might get uh, one one kind of produce made by other farmers for their own consumption so they mutually depend on each other also so it's a good uh, insightful lecture wherein uh, even the complex uh, uh, situations like uh, the anger of the frustration of farmers where they go to the extent of uh, uh, destroying their own produce which is uh, similar to boston tea party which is uh, not what uh, human beings want because the world is now stepping into a food crisis and uh, we see there are lot of uh, good uh, um, farming countries are at war today for example both russia and ukraine are in a continual war for more than uh, i think 2 years now and so we have uh, even israel war so even sudan so world will and then added to all that there is a climate change as sridhar garu mentioned so the solution is to have as you said more and more ketiwalas i would look at it like ketiwala itself strengthen itself and extend its roots and then make its inroads into 
different uh, parts of the entire worldwide uh, farming community and offer solutions with the knowledge and uh, expertise that uh, uh, dr kishore to... one small um, uh, addition i would like to uh, mention Please over here uh, maybe i was not able to articulate farmer as a consumer as a role so clearly when i said farmer as a consumer it's not only one farmer uh, consuming the produce of another car, uh, another farmer maybe if he's producing rice he's consuming sugarcane from somewhere or something like that when i position farmer as a consumer who is a consumer a consumer is the most important uh, ingredient of an ecosystem without the consumer that particular industry will completely collapse because when the industry produces and there is no consumer to offtake the the, the complete industry actually literally collapses. So that here, chain, yes. I am trying to give the importance to farmer as the consumer there. It's a mutual relationship. I am the consumer of the farmer's produce. He's the you know consumer of my attention and my importance. If I don't give that attention and importance to farmer, that's my, you know, he's, he's the consumer of my attention, importance, and cognizance. If I don't give that to him today, very soon this community called farmer might be wiped off. Right. And then we are at a war of dog eat dog. Yes, yes, you are right, sir. Yeah, that yeah. Uh, uh, symbiotic relationship. Exactly, between... symbiotic is the word. Symbiotic is the word. Interdependence right. and symbiotic. Right. Thank you. And uh, so, hope everyone has filled in the feedback form. Uh, Sharat, make sure uh, the feedback form as well is made available. And also look at other uh, programs that are. Um, the pipeline in fact you would find uh, the month of sharat yeah in the month of uh, month of april is actually categorized as the non-stop april where every day there will be one program or other of ketiwala in different languages be it telugu or in uh, marathi or hindi tamil or um, uh, any other language so that way um Canada, we and uh, so that way every day of the week uh, seven days a week you'd find programs uh, very soon thank you